Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 24 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, Dave and I are talking about tech companies are under increased scrutiny with everyone from lawmakers and investors to employees and consumers examining relationships between what's good for business and what's bad for individuals. Hi Dave, it's great to see you on the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be back and that's great to look at this topic because I'm getting a lot of questions about this. Yeah, it's a great topic, it really is, and it's on the, the tip of everyone's tongues, what with the new GDPR regulation coming in in Europe on the, the, the 25th of May. So Microsoft and the Australian government have welcomed the passage of clarifying lawful overseas use of data, or the Cloud Act, by the US Congress in late March. Do you think this will drive more commerce with the US or less? I think it's it's really as a double-edged sword because the reason they're doing this is really for law and order reasons. So in other words, uh, if I'm you know leveraging Azure or I'm leveraging AWS and my data ha happens to be physically stored in Ireland, for example, which it may be, uh, that they can get access to it by subpoenaing the American company. Uh, and so it's a uh, it's a bit of a scary thing, uh, the whole Big Brother aspect of it. But uh, it also kind of eliminates the legal battles have been going on, which Microsoft has been involved in one of them uh, with the United States government over subpoena services to get information off of these things. It just clarifies it and makes it a law. I think, I think that what's going to happen in Australia is that they're going to see uh, probably an uptick in um, uh, managed service providers because they're looking to store information on, on uh, servers that are going to be un, unsubpoenable or you can't subpoena. Uh, via U.S. law, so they're kind of out of the reach of U.S. laws. I wouldn't say for, for nefarious purposes, but just for privacy issues. Uh, the concern would be that uh, we get some private data which is swept up in uh, data that they're actually looking for, for incriminating evidence on companies versus something that's going to be um, more uh, uh, innocuous in nature. And so that's why outside firms are, and I think rightfully so, are a little suspect of this. I think that... Uh, they may end up losing money in the fact that uh, a lot of the cloud providers may not have uh, presence in uh, Australia to the degree that we thought they would have because of these issues. In other words, if the stuff is you can get at the information uh, pretty much in any country, you know, through the American provider, then ultimately uh, it doesn't make sense for you to have your information all over the place and regions basically are eliminated from a legal purpose. The other thing, and which I think is probably more important here, is that the Australians are probably going to be a bit um, suspect of the whole thing uh, because they don't really reside under American laws. Uh, they, however, are going to use American cloud providers like Azure and AWS, kind of like you have to, uh, to be in the cloud market. And then how much of their data can be compromised if there's subpoenas that come down, you know, based on indictments of, of Australian companies. And I don't see that happening uh, And the law really doesn't doesn't is really kind of vague on how that stuff uh, really is going to is going to go down. But it's scary in the fact that if it's not interpreted well or not defined well, that it may be interpreted in certain ways by law enforcement officials uh, in the United States. And therefore, Australians could find some of their data compromised and, and that's no good. No, it really isn't any good, is it? I mean, so would I be right in saying that if you're an Australian company and you're using AWS Cloud and your servers are based in Australia, that you're still potentially uh, under threat of the Cloud Act? Yeah, my understanding is no. Um, they, they're really not looking to, uh, to, to do act, get, get companies that are not on U.S. soil. But the problem is that so many Australian companies are multinational. And they have points of presence in the in the U.S. and the U.K. and you know Asia and things like that. And so, therefore, this may be a loophole for them to extend the subpoena to gather information off of a server that happens to be physically located in Australia or physically located in another country. You know, just kind of based on the fact we're dealing with an American provider. So it's not going to be the issue with Alibaba or some of the other cloud providers out there, the second tier cloud providers, but for the big providers, which everyone's gonna to go to, you know, this is, which are all US based, you know, the, uh, the, the, the concern would be the influence of the US government to go out there and uh, get access to your information. I don't see widespread abuse uh, with this. 
Um, but you look at it like the 9-11 stuff, we did have the FISA court set up and there's some issues that are popping up around the use of those. And that's a secret court that exists in the United States in case they want to wire tap people and not let them know about it and this could be you know one of these things that becomes very scandalous in a few years well the good news is we can always undo it uh, or, or refine it uh, but the bad news is that i think someone's going to get get getting hurt before that happens yeah absolutely and how would it sit with say alibaba that have got um servers within the u.s uh, for argument's sake, would they still be under the the Cloud Act if they they've got servers on the U.S. soil? My understanding is no. I mean, obviously, if it's on U.S. soil, they can subpoena the the providers there if there's a physical presence, and maybe seize the physical server. Um, but as far as having access through the provider, uh, I don't think Alibaba is compelled to cooperate. I think the U.S. firms are compelled to cooperate. So China may have their own laws and regulations coming toward the end of the year, which basically replicates that act so they can get access to the information no matter where it's stored. Uh, but right now they seem pretty safe. So I guess that means that the, uh, you know, if you're running an illegal business, you know, probably not a good idea to put it on Amazon or, or uh, Google or Microsoft and uh, Alibaba is a question mark. Yeah, absolutely. It really is. It leads me on to my next question, actually, Dave, to close the show. is: uh, Have you got sort of the top three tips that, that businesses should be aware of to prepare for the Cloud Act or, you know, that, that, that are already involved and that, that aren't really aware of it? Yeah, number one is to look at the use cases. So how are you vulnerable? And most, most businesses are not going to be vulnerable. But the thing is, uh, are you storing in on servers that may incriminate you in some way, then chances are that's not going to be the case, but it could. You know, tax issues, things like that, they may go after one piece of information and get other pieces of information that's incriminating. And if so, you need to clean that stuff up pretty quick, probably clean up your act as well. Um, then number two is ultimately, you know, what kind of encryption services and security services should you be leveraging? This is really, you know, kind of a security issue, uh, not not to the fact that you can't, you're, they're not going to be able to encrypt your stuff because I think the government will be able to encrypt your stuff. But the fact of the matter is, if they do take a physical server from someplace or a subpoena, that, that if your stuff is existing with some other suspicious information that the government is seizing, you just happen to be on that physical device, then it's going to be encrypted and typically safe. And they're typically not going to ask you to unencrypt it if it has nothing to do with the case that they're looking at. And then number three, you know, consult attorneys as to you know, what this means in terms of how you're going to do business going forward, where are the exposures, you know, where are the risks, you know, what kind of changes need to be made and kinds of times of cloud things you're using or some, do some pieces of information need to be kept on premise and do you need to, you know, version that information in a certain way and, you know, use certain security parameters and, and because it's, you know, kind of like everything else that comes out of Congress, you know, kind of an ambiguous thing that has a lot left to interpretation, uh, you know, as well make an interpretation in terms of policies and start making the changes now so you accommodate the law. That's great, Dave. That really is. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that. It's been a great show. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It's my pleasure, man. Greetings from Canada. Hey. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for watching. We really hope you enjoyed this week's Australia show. The Cloud Act really is a hard act to follow. So um, it's, I guess, uh, pardon the bad pun, but I guess you're going to have to look into that one. And, uh, yeah, it's been great to have David's uh, insight into the Cloud Act. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and colleagues. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn as well, as is David. So look forward to catching up with you soon. Thanks for watching.